Welcome to part one of the map sequence tutorial. A machine application is usually represented by a rigidly defined sequence of steps. For example, step one starts an axis movement, step two switches on an LED, and step three stops the axis movement. With map sequence, the steps can be rearranged dynamically. They can be performed in whatever order is needed to meet the requirements of the application. The order in which the steps are performed is defined in a sequence file. This file can be loaded and started by map sequence. At runtime, you can use the HMI application to swap, delete, or add new steps to the sequence. This tutorial is divided into two parts. This first part deals with adding and setting up the configuration for map sequence and creating the sequence file. We'll also add and configure the function block MP Sequence Core. Then, in part two, we'll add and configure the widgets used to display the sequence in the HMI application and explain how to edit the sequence there. Our first step is to add MP Sequence Core. This is what we use to configure the individual steps for the machine process. We have to specify a storage medium under device name. This storage medium can be used at runtime to import and export the sequence file to and from map sequence. The storage device has already been set up in the configuration of the target system with the name HD. The individual steps that should be available for the sequence are defined in the section Commands. Each command represents one step in the step sequence. Depending on the application, we can select different types of commands. To move a conveyor belt, for example, we could use the type Movement. To switch on an LED, we could use the type Set Process Variable. To wait at a step in the machine process until a certain condition is met, such as the opening of a gate, we'd use Wait for Process Variable and so on. With map sequence, there are also certain commands that must be included every time, such as start and end commands. For more information about the different command types, see the automation help. In our sample application, we have a step sequencer consisting of three steps. We'll define these steps under commands. The first command we'll add is LED green. We can use text to define how the command should be displayed in the HMI application. The process variable is specified under process variable. We'll select LED green as the process variable to switch on a green LED for five seconds. In this example, all of our commands are located in the hierarchy basic. This will be relevant later when we go to display the commands in the HMI application. Commands can be arranged in a hierarchy under Hierarchy. If we need a lot of different commands for an axis, we can create a hierarchy called Axis. If there are a lot of different commands for controlling process variables, we can create one called Process, and so on. We can use the commands Start Conveyor and Stop Conveyor to start and stop axis movement. Both of these commands are of the type Movement. For a detailed explanation of how to link these commands to a real axis, Check out the map sequence getting started tutorial. Now we're ready to create our sequence file. It'll be stored on the specified storage medium with the name machine process. The sequence file can be created in any editor. It consists of XML nodes that define the structure of the sequence. The individual steps can now be arranged as desired using the keyword steps. Each step node must have a unique value and must always be linked to the previous step. Parameter values can be specified for each step if necessary, depending on the type of command that is used. For more information about how to use them, see the automation help. It's important to start and end with the steps start sequence and end sequence. All the steps in between can be arranged as desired. To execute our machine sequence, we need to add the function block MP sequence core. We'll use the input MP link to establish a connection to the configuration that we created earlier, named G Sequence Core. The function block is enabled using the Enable input. Now we need to specify the MP Sequence Core parameters to define the sequence that should be executed. Finally, we need to specify the mode, which determines how the sequence should be executed. In this case, we'll use automatic mode. 
To learn more about what other execution modes are available, see the automation help. After downloading our changes to the target system, we're ready to test our program. First, we'll enable monitor mode. The function block and the sequencer parameters have already been added to the watch window. Before we can start our sequence, we need to enter the name of the sequence file under the parameter sequence. The file we created is called machine process. We don't have to include the file type extension. The sequence file is then imported using the import command. A successful import is signaled by the output parameter import done. The sequence can now be used by MP Sequence Core. To start the sequence, we'll enable the start command for MP Sequence Core. As the sequence is running, the info structure of the function block shows which step is currently being executed. In order to modify the machine process at runtime, the sequence file can be manually edited and restarted. In part two of this map sequence tutorial, We'll take a look at how to adapt the machine process at runtime using the HMI application. Thanks for watching.